Welcome to lecture one covering the endocrine system. Uh, the major goal of this lecture will be to cover steroid and non-steroid hormones, their major actions, and how they are released. So let's begin. To begin with, the endocrine system is much like the nervous system in that it regulates many parts of the body. The differences are it's a lot slower acting. It's not an instantaneous thing, typically. So it's often called the second messenger system of the body. Uh, but the effects of hormones are broad. They affect reproduction, not only the growth and development during the embryo stage, but also the release of hormones that affect puberty and determine male from female. Uh, mobilization of body defenses, maintaining many homeostatic functions in the body, and hormones like thyroxin, which you know regulate your metabolism. So they have a very broad range of functions and are quite powerful. Uh, the difference between male and female is basically testosterone and estrogen, a difference in hormones. Being chemical messengers, they can go anywhere throughout the body. They're carried by the bloodstream, so they're long distance. For example, when the ovaries release estrogen, it has effects all over the body. It's not a local signaling system. It's more of a long distance signaling system. Autocrines and paracrines are more local. Uh, we're not going to consider these part of the endocrine system. For example, um, interferon is a chemical that cells will release when they're infected by a virus that will signal neighboring cells that there's a virus in the area, but they don't work over long distances. Looking at nervous system, you've got the neuron here releasing a neurotransmitter and affecting a muscle in this case. This would be more of how the nervous system works. Very direct with the release of neurotransmitters, not a long distance signaling. It's a very short gap here. Whereas something like a hormone can be released from a gland, which can be you know, located nowhere near the target cells. And because the hormone is released, it can travel through the bloodstream, like insulin or thyroxin, and affect many cells all over the body which can be a very long distance from this gland. Now the key to this picture, you see how it's affecting the target cells. When you release a hormone, it's only going to affect the cells that have receptors for that hormone. So it does not affect cells all over the body um, in every way. So some cells in your body will not have receptors and remain unaffected by that hormone. Other cells will have receptors and will respond to that hormone. The specificity varies. A couple of quick examples here. Adrenocorticotropic hormone has receptors that are found in just the adrenal cortex. Now, these are on the adrenal glands that sit on top of your kidneys. So that's very specific and it will cause, cause the release of the steroid hormones from the adrenal cortex. Whereas something like thyroxin, this hormone, has receptors in just about every single cell in your body and this mediates metabolism so it goes basically everywhere. The activation depends on several factors. Uh, what's the blood level of the hormone as far as how many cells get activated, how many receptors are there um, on or in the target cells, and the affinity between the receptor and the hormone. So how well does the fit? And you can have a lot of issues go wrong here where you've got a misshapen receptors that may not respond to the hormone. There are instances where you have males who produce testosterone, but the receptors for testosterone are misshapen or absent, and therefore they respond mainly to only estrogen and would appear female, even though their genetics are XY male. Hormones have quite a few different actions. Um, they can alter the plasma membrane, which would be opening and closing ion channels like calcium channels or sodium and potassium pumps, activating you know, muscles or nerves, something like that, uh, stimulating the release of neurotransmitters. They stimulate the synthesis of proteins, so they go in and affect transcription factors that will actually affect transcription and cause the making of a new protein uh, during translation on a ribosome. They can activate or deactivate proteins that already exist. So perhaps you have an enzyme pathway that is basically turned off and it's a hormone that changes the shape of that enzyme and activates it and starts the system up. So it's not producing a new protein, but just activating one that's already there. In 
inducing secretory activity like the adrenocorticotropic hormone causing the secretory activity of the steroid hormones of the adrenal gland or like hormones secretin in the digestive system they can also stimulate mitosis which is just cell division across the body the two basic types and this is one of the main ideas that we will cover in this lecture are steroid and non-steroid steroid hormones are based in cholesterol non-steroid hormones tend to be based in amino acids um, oxytocin follicle stimulating hormone thyroid stimulating hormone are all examples of non-steroid hormones and estrogens testosterone cortisol that's coming from that adrenal cortex um, are based in cholesterol the other difference is how they cross the membrane a steroid hormone will diffuse straight through a cell membrane and act internally in the cell whereas a non-steroid hormone will have to bind to receptors on the outside cell membrane and act in that way. It does not cross the cell membrane. So those are your two major differences. One's based in cholesterol, the other in protein. One crosses the cell membrane, the other does not. It's a few pictures of some of the hormones. You can see uh, the protein-based ones here like oxytocin. Uh, it's just made up of a chain of amino acids. It's a very small hormone. Parathyroid hormone is quite large, but still just a chain of amino acids. These would be examples of non-steroid hormones. Cortisol is steroid based derived from cholesterol so this would be a good example of a steroid based hormone. The action of a steroid hormone let's cover it in writing basically it's going to enter into the nucleus binding to specific proteins typically transcription factors that affect the DNA basic you know we're talking about turning on a gene here so it will affect proteins that activate transcription which will ultimately lead to the production of more proteins and we always say DNA codes are proteins and proteins do everything in this picture you see the steroid hormone crossing the cell membrane binding to a protein receptor and once they bind this is activated and it initiates transcription you make some messenger RNA this would have the code for how to build a new protein. See the messenger RNA go out here to ribosomes, it is translated and you get a new protein from this. So the ultimate action of this steroid hormone was the production of new proteins by turning on specific regions of the DNA. Key to this, straight through the cell membrane. This does not have to bind to any receptors out here. It acts internally. For the non-steroid hormone, it can do the exact same thing in that it can activate Transcription translation can activate proteins that already exist. Uh, there's many actions it can possibly do. But the key is the hormone does not enter the cell. It has to bind to a membrane receptor. And that binding to a receptor is called cell communication. Most of the time it involves something called a G-protein pathway. And they get pretty complicated. But basically the binding action initiates it cascade response that ultimately ends in the production of new protein or activating or deactivating a protein. So we'll take a look at this. This is a simple G protein pathway. You can see the hormones that can affect our second messenger system which is cyclic AMP. How they all work in this case is the hormone will bind to the receptor G protein which will activate G protein. Uh, GTP guanine triphosphate activates the protein it will then activate the enzyme adenylate cyclase which will cleave cyclic AMP ATP into cyclic AMP typically this will activate protein kinase A or, or any other versions of the protein kinases ultimately you're going to get a cell response from this activation of enzymes, secretion, opening of a ion channel are all good examples but the key to the process is the hormone must bind to this receptor externally. It does not cross or go into the cell. But the external binding causes an internal change which then starts a cascade of one protein changing another, changing another until something happens inside the cell. Turn a gene on, turn a gene off, turn an existing protein on or off, open an ion channel. There's lots of choices here but you're ultimately going to get some sort of cellular response. Hormones get released in three different ways mainly. 
uh, hormones can be released by other hormones. This is called the hormone, hormonal response. They can also be released from levels of, of different chemicals in the blood. The example given here would be if you're hypocalcemic, you've got a low blood calcium level, that will stimulate the parathyroid gland to release parathyroid hormone, which will then stimulate the osteoclasts of your bone to break down the bone matrix releasing calcium into your blood. Until your calcium level gets back up to normal, then the system shuts down. A basic example of homeostasis. Insulin is done the same way. You know, it's uh, blood glucose levels that affect the release of insulin. In the hormonal way, it's the hypothalamus gland and the pituitary glands that do a lot of the controlling other hormones, anterior pituitary especially, will release hormones that cause the release of other hormones. We'll talk about some of these when we get a little further in the lecture. The other way is from the nervous system. You can have a nerve physically activate the release of hormones. So hormones, releasing other hormones, substances in the blood causing the release of hormone, or nerves causing the release of hormones. That will end our first lecture. In lecture two, we'll be discussing the actual hormones. And that's going to be the main idea of the second lecture. Uh, going over the major glands, what hormones they produce, and the actions of those hormones. Um, not going to cover all of them, but we do have a pretty long list to go over.